Hedgehog Firearms Restoration. We got a fun one today. We got a GA 98 or a GEW 98 from 1917. Bit rusty, bit beat up. The stock looks like somebody's cat scratched its freaking claws on it. And I've never taken one of these apart, but we're going to take this apart today. And we're going to see all the major bits and pieces and see what see what it looks like underneath Let's see if we can turn this into a respectable wall hanger this is a demilitarized gun it has a lead filled barrel and from what I've been told these are uh, war bond guns and they were giving out as um, gifts at the end of World War II for people that purchase war bonds during the war so hang on, we're going to take this all apart. We're going to do this in multiple little segments because this gun is so damn long. It takes up almost all of my workbench. So I'm going to have to reposition the camera a few times to give you guys a good perspective on what I'm doing and what the parts look like. Hang on, here we go. Alright, so the first thing I want to take off is this front barrel band. And right here is a little detent that when you push, you can see a small button go inside here. Just, just for clarity, uh, for a couple of days before I started thinking about taking this gun apart, I put some of my world famous pimp juice on some of the moving parts, like in this where this little detent is, and where the little spring is, and a lot of the screws that are on here. Uh, there's not much left in this batch. I got to make up another batch. But this is a special mixture I use. It's automatic transmission fluid and kerosene in a 50-50 combo and I found that it makes a very great penetrating oil and it doesn't uh, dissipate like something like WD-40 does also it doesn't uh, ruin uh, any bluing that may be on the gun like um, some of the other uh, cleaners or um, rust preventatives would if a lot of times if you have a rust preventative what it'll end up doing is it'll uh, All right, so the first thing we're going to take off is this first barrel band, and there's a spring here. If you push this, you could see a small detent go back, and that'll allow us to drift this friggin' this front barrel band off. Just for full disclosure, I did soak all the moving parts in this with some ATF, automatic transmission fluid, and kerosene in a 50-50 mixture, and I found that makes a great penetrating oil. I'm going to use a couple things here. I'm going to use my mallet, and I'm going to use a little block of wood to hit along the top. And we'll see if we can get this thing off. So I'm going to push the button, give this thing some gentle taps. Yeah, oh, she's moving pretty good. And then we can see in the back over here all the mung that's left in this gun. And it's going pretty good, so I'm not going to worry too much about using the block of wood. I'm just going to gently tap this off. Let's see what kind of crap's laying underneath waiting for us. There we go. Ugh. Look at the inside of that thing. It's freaking horrible. <laughs> and then, uh, oh yeah, just tons of shit. And just freaking dirt and mungs sitting in there. Now you can get a better look at the spring that's sticking out what that looks like I think that'll come off or once we get the wood stock off we'll be able to access to that from the inside so the next thing I want to take off is going to be the forward barrel band I'm going to reposition the camera and then we'll tackle that one okay just like the forward barrel band we're going to use the same tools small hammer and a block of wood I'm going to twist this just a little bit so I can get a better angle on it and we'll see how this goes. Oh shit, that just pops right off. And then I'm going to put the, the corner of this wood in this groove. Give it a gentle tap on the top. Let's see what happens. There we go. And then I'm just going to work back and forth. Gentle tap stop. Gentle tap bottom. With anything like this, take your time. Don't hit it hard. If it's if it's frozen, stop what you're doing. Put some more. 
of the ATF and the kerosene on it. You don't have to worry about it later. It'll clean up and let it soak for another day. Patience is your friend when you're taking apart a gun that's 110 years old. Never be in a rush to take it apart. A while back I had acquired a uh, an old H&R and the thing was a literal bucket of rust and nothing would move. The action would only move just a tiny little bit. So what I did was I made up a mixture of the ATF and the kerosene in a bucket. And I put the gun in it for almost two weeks. And I would just go out every day and the action would only cycle just a little bit. But I would just cycle it gently that little bit that it would go. And every day it would go a little further and a little further until the action was finally free. And then I was able to start getting some of the screws out. And I ended up doing a, a pretty nice restoration on that gun. It's still just a wall hanger because the interior of the bore was totally destroyed. But from the outside, it looks like a fabulous gun. It's just time took its toll on the bore. So as you can see, this is coming down pretty good. Just take your time. See if it's it. We're able to wiggle it. No, it's still kind of tight. So there's also a, a a spring here, but it's it's stuck in the down position, which is why it's it started so easy. I think if that was in the up position, I would have had to somehow get that down and then start it with the with the mallet or with the block of wood in the mallet. And I think right now it's just stuck riding over the top of that spring-loaded piece that holds it on normally. I'm hoping once we get a little bit further up here, because of the tape around the wood, should just slide off at some moment here but it's coming take your time and if you can't always if you got a scrap of hardwood like this is an old piece of stock save it it's useful for stuff like this it's non marring and if you cut the corners nice and sharp you can get it on edges to catch when you're tapping parts off it's amazing what you can make there we go. Now we got it. We're going to slide that down. We're going to have to depress the other front spring. Get it over the top of it. And then there we go. We got the forward piece out. So the next thing I want to try to lift up, I'll just move the camera just a little bit. So I want to see if I can get this piece of top wood off. And it's probably fused pretty hard to the barrel. Not really sure. I don't want to stick too big of a sharp object in there. I'm just going to try a plastic pick underneath. Just to start off with. See if I can get it just to move just a little bit. There we go. So plastic pick made it pop. And I'm thinking this will just lift up a little bit and forward. Oh, my. And then it comes out. You can see the lip in the back where it fit in the receiver. We'll put that off to the side. Oh, that barrel is a friggin' raging mess under there. All kinds of rust. That's going to be a lot of fun to clean up. All right, let me reposition this, and we'll see if we can get the barrel removed from the stock. Before I moved it, I just gave it a little turn, and I figured I'd give everybody a look at what the top of this barrel looks like going as we go down it. Very, very, very rusted. I don't think that piece of wood has been off in... Uh, 
probably the whole it's its whole entire life, probably a hundred and five years. All right, let's reposition this and uh, see if we can get the barrel and the receiver off the woodstock. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is remove the bolt. I'm going to put it in the safe position. I'm going to pull the bolt latch release and pull the bolt straight back and out. I've had this bolt out previously when I when I acquired this old firearm. This was frozen in place, so I put some of the automatic transmission fluid and kerosene on it. And it only moved just a little bit, but after just gently working it back and forth, back and forth, it got free. And I was able to get it out. Once it was out, I cleaned it up just a little bit and just put it back in. But we're going to do a more thorough uh, conservation on this at some point. Once you get the bolt out, we're going to flip this upside down and watch all the friggin' rust drop out. <laughs> So what you got is a set of screws. You got four screws front and back. You got a small set screw and then the screw that holds the the lower end and the magazine on to the receiver and the uh, same ends front and back. So what you want to do is you want to take the smaller screw out first before you tackle the big screw. Otherwise you'll ruin one or both of the screws when you take them out. Let me find a good screwdriver bit here. There we go. So that these don't go on very tight typically, but they get frozen in place because just rust builds up. These are actually in absolutely gorgeous condition underneath these will look fabulous once they get cleaned up just a little bit so I'm gonna take both of the small screws out first this one back here is at slightly is at a slight angle and if you look on the larger screw it's got a notch on it make sure that the notch is lined up with this smaller screw because somebody else might have boogered the thing up before you got it but in this case, it looks pretty good. Hang on, I'll, I'll just zoom in a little bit and give you a close-up of what that looks like. Back in here. Mm, kind of tough to tell. The lighting's pretty poor. But you can see the chamfer and the big screw is lining up where the small screw is, which is, which is up in here. All right, there we go. I need to hire a camera person. So this one's coming out a little tougher, so I'm gonna I'm gonna gently rock it back and forth a little bit. Hopefully, loosen up some of the mung that's on the threads, but it is coming out. Screws are just like anything else, like pulling off a piece of wood in the front or the barrel bands. Take your time. If it starts to get stiff on you, stop. Put some more fluid on it. Let it set for another day. It's not going anywhere. It'll be fine. You come back and tackle it the next day. It's a little wetter. The oils have penetrated a little better, and you'll have a better time getting it out. And then you won't have to go out and try to source this tiny little screw for like fifteen dollars it's in pretty good shape looks pretty good we'll set that off to the side and we'll change bits to tackle the bigger screws all right let's see how this one moves so. All right, so that one right there is super, super tight. I can't even budge it. Nope, that one's going to require some dynamite. I'm probably going to have to let it sit for a day or two. Let's try the front one. All right, the front one just popped. Give it a little back and forth to get some of the oils on it. 
on the threads. There we go. And we got that one. All right. Let's see if we can't get to the bolt from the top. If I remember. Uh, yep. So it's so right up in here. We can see the top of that bolt that's being very stubborn. You can see that little half round right there. I'm going to let some of the oils penetrate in right here overnight and then we'll come back and tackle this again tomorrow and see if we can't get that other screw to back out with a little less trouble. Okay, so we're back at the bench. It's been about 48 hours since we put some more fluid, some penetrating fluid on the screw. And let's see if we can't get this thing to back out and probably take the two assemblies apart. Uh, before I take this out, one thing I did re little research on was how to take this magazine floor plate off. So while everything's still put together, we got to apply a little force down here to this release spring. I want to take the magazine base plate off and see if I can get the magazine out first. Then we'll attack the screw. And the other thing I noticed at the front end of the rifle, there's a pin. It looks like it's going through a piece of metal and through the bayonet lug in the wood. We're going to try to pop that off as well before we try to separate the barrel from the rifle itself. So let's take off this magazine floor plate first and get the mag spring and the follower out. So to do that, there's a, there's a spring plunger in here. I'm going to take a pin. I'm going to push down and then I'm going to push towards the back of the rifle and this whole plate is going to shift and then pop up. There we go and we got oh, some kind of garbage falling down in there. We got the, the base plate out, the mag spring and the magazine follower out came out pretty easy and you can see from the underside how it's got these these small hooks on it and that's what that's what clips into the bottom of the receiver all right let's see if we can get this screw out nope there she goes she's moving we'll give it a little wiggle back and forth if you remember from before, you could also see the screw from the top. So in the last 48 hours, I also applied a little fluid to the top of the screw. And the reason it was probably welded in so hard was probably because the screw was semi-welded to the wood stock itself. And there we go. We got that screw out. But hang on, I'm going to reposition the camera and then we're going to take out that forward pin and then see if we can't separate these two pieces. Okay, this is the pin I'm talking about right here. And it looks like it goes through this front cap, the wood, and possibly through the area where the bayonet lug is on the underside. So before I start trying to pull the barrel up and off, I'm going to drive this pin out. And then we'll attempt to get the barrel off. I need a little bit longer punch. Too big. <laughs> Eight million punches and I don't have a long one. There we go. Let's see how this works. There we go. We got it now. All right. And I'm just going to give the bottom of this receiver a tap and see what happens here. There we go. Okay, so the... There we go. Okay, so apparently this piece was just held on to the wood with that pin, the bayonet lug. 
That thing is filthy on the inside. But the barrel did move. I'm going to put it back up on the gun rest to take this off because I want to be very careful about the wood in the back. Hold on, we're going to reposition the camera again. Okay, so we're going to gently lift this out. I want to be very careful back here because the receiver fits very tight into the wood and I don't want to pull it up too much at too steep of an angle and possibly chip any wood out back here. So I'm going to gently lift at the front. I'm just going to put a finger in here. Just gently rock it. Alright, she's coming out nice and easy. Oh yeah, let's take a look at the bottom of this thing. Holy crap. Look at all the mung in there. We got a lot of cleaning to do on this one. This barrel is incredibly rusted. But I got some money, says so she cleans up looking pretty good. A lot of dirt on that trigger mechanism. We're going to be taking this all apart. Clean this all up, drive these pins out. Spring in there and still in great shape. Let's take a look at the inside of the stock. Actually, let's see if we can't flip this over. And we got to get the lower plate out. I'm going to take a couple of brass punches. I'm going to punch up here where I can get at the escutcheon to hold the lower plate on. And looks like we could tap here with a brass piece, possibly drive the lower portion, the trigger guard, and the magazine plate down. It's moving a little bit. Okay, now she's moving. Just go gentle a little bit at a time. Remember, don't have to go fast here. There we go. She's out. Oh my god. Look at the filth on this thing. We got a lot of cleanup to do on that. <laughs> and you can see you can still see the recoil lug in here. It's in pretty good condition. I'm gonna take the recoil lug screw off here. We're gonna try to take some of this metal off back here. One of the things I got a while back was a Wheeler Engineering screwdriver set. And some of the things that they include in here are specialty bits just for Mausers with the correct pins. And we're going to use these to try to get these metal pieces off front and back. Coming. I'm just going to work her back and forth gentle. Here we go. I'm not sure if I'm going to drive the recoil lug out yet. I may. Put that off to the side. We've got the small double pin, 0625 double pin. Oh, that 
came out nice and easy. This is just a wood screw. Back here. I'm not really sure how I'm going to get that piece of metal out. Some kind of hook, maybe. Might just leave that in there for now. I've got to do a little research and maybe how to get this plate off. Last thing we'll take off before we attack the butt plate is the rear swing sling swivel. Again, gently rock it back and forth. It's getting looser and looser. If it was getting tighter as I would go, I would probably stop. Put some more penetrating fluid on it. And then work it back in, back and forth a little bit. Let it, let it soak in for a day or two. One thing I did notice about this rear swing swivel is it looks like it's a replacement. It's a different diameter of wire, and it looks like it's been kind of hammered into place. I'm, I'm assuming the original one broke off at some point, and they replaced it with what they had on hand. All right, this one's coming too. Getting looser. You can see from looking down in it where I put the penetrating fluid, it looks like it got quite a bit quite a bit deep down into the screws over the last couple days where I had it soaking. It's about halfway down into the screw. And you also see that they're also flat tipped, these wood screws. She's pretty munged up too. One thing I was not expecting to see inside this rifle is I thought this was just a wooden joint. There is actually uh, a steel pillar embedded in this rifle. That we're going to leave in there because that sets the gap between the upper receiver and the lower receiver so that when you bolt everything together it crushes to the right depth and not too far. That's about it. Just got to take the butt plate off but the screws back there are nuked out. I got to put some more penetrating fluid on those. That's probably going to wrap up this episode of Patchog Firearms Restoration. Uh, join me Again for the next episode where we're going to try to get the butt plate off this old stock and get the springs off the front of this old stock and then recondition this thing so it looks good again. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you like this channel. Join me for more videos if you have a passion for refurbishing and conserving old firearms like this one. And have a great day.